A long time ago when I was an apprentice, my coworker and I were both gear junkies and we would always compare Makita versus DeWalt or Milwaukee versus Ryobi, Carhartt versus Dickies. And we'd always kind of try to one up each other with our next purchase. And one day he came into the job, he was wearing this brand new coat and proudly exclaimed, it's the new Extreme Series. Now it was January in New England, which meant that when you woke up, you pretty much accepted that that was as warm as you were gonna be for the rest of the day. A thermos of hot coffee was essential. The job site was freezing. We were working in an old town hall, which they were renovating. And everybody was asking this guy about his jacket. I mean, how warm is it? How does it compare to the regular one that I'm wearing? Uh, how much did it cost? All those things. Everybody was asking him about his brand new Yukon Extreme Series jacket. So after a few days, his conclusion on this new jacket was that it was warmer than his old Carhartt jacket, although it was stiff and bulky and kind of hard to work in. Now, a lot of times this is something that you just accept with workwear because until they really break in, the fibers soften up a little bit, it tends to be a little stiff. However, at the end of the winter, his jacket was basically the same as it was in the beginning of the winter. It hadn't broken in at all. A few years later, I was hanging four inch rigid conduit in a parking garage in February. So this meant that all day I was reaching up above my head and the jacket that I was wearing would come up and sort of expose my midriff and I would get a little chill coming up my, my spine. It was terrible. So I thought back to that Yukon Extreme series that my coworker had had and I ordered myself a pair of coveralls. You know, the full suit. The idea here is to trap warm air against your body and also allow you to move in any, any way you want without exposing any raw skin to the, uh, the, the elements. And this worked great for this purpose. It was wonderful. But I definitely felt what he was talking about as far as the rigidity and the stiffness and bulkiness of that original uh, Extreme Series. Now, the Carhartt Extreme Series was actually introduced back in the 90s, but I didn't really see them very much on the job site except for the coldest of days. And the reason for this is because most of the time you're giving up mobility and comfort for warmth. So a lot of times you didn't see these monstrosities out there unless it was really, really cold. And the collection remained virtually unchanged for most of its life. So a lot of times you had that bulky lack of mobility. It also, they seemed like they had a lack of pockets on those earlier models. And the coveralls that I had bought had a real issue with the zipper placement. So if you had to go to the bathroom, it meant taking off the whole upper part of the garment in order just to, to pee. So it was, it was kind of a pain in the neck. The black material was 1000 denier nylon, which while it's impervious to wear, I mean, really, I never saw one of these wear through. If anybody has ever seen one, please let me know because I think they're basically bomb proof. The problem was, is it really felt like you were almost wearing like a painter's drop cloth. It really felt like the jacket or the pants were wearing you rather than the other way around. So this year, Carhartt completely redesigned the Yukon Extreme Series. They added another color. They changed every single piece that they had before and even added in some dedicated women's products. In this video, I am going to compare all of the old Yukon Series to the new Yukon Series. One of the things I love most about Carhartt is that they listen to their customers. They go out on job sites and visit with the people who actually rely on their gear every day, taking notes and improving their products based on feedback. So for this collection, most had the same experience that I had had. Limited mobility, bulk, and some design flaws. So across the board, they addressed these issues, beginning with the material itself. They went from a 1,000 denier to a 500 denier, and I asked them about this change and really how it affected durability most, since the individual threads are thinner in 500 denier. But the way it was explained to me was very interesting. They said that to imagine fabric like a log cabin. The 1,000 denier means bigger logs, but less of them. And this means a stiffer and heavier material, but also larger air gaps between the threads. So 500 denier, on the other hand, uses thinner individual threads, but more of them per square inch, meaning strength is essentially the same or better, but with the benefit of a tighter weave, which means more wind and moisture resistance. It's lighter and more flexible, but maintains that abrasion resistance, which is borderline magical. Another change lies within. They've gone with 150 gram 3M Thinsulate, which is warmer than the old models, with the exception of the Parka, which gets an even warmer featherless down. So the new series is also warmer across the board. Mobility has been improved not only by the lighter material, but also by the addition of their full swing gussets and an overall better trimmer fit. 
The fly on the coveralls is now at an acceptable level, thank God, and more pockets have been added. You'll also see a retro reflective tape in some spots. Now, we have to wear a high visibility vest over our jackets anyway, but better visibility no matter what is never a bad thing. All of the pieces are available in the original black or a new drab green color, which is super cool looking. And you may have noticed that they now have two layering options, a high pile fleece vest and hooded jacket. So if your day is going to be really, really cold, throw on one of these bad boys underneath the jacket for even more insulation or wear them on their own. They both feature thick fleece, which is reinforced with that 500 denier nylon duck in places like the shoulders, the forearms, and the pockets, basically wherever you're going to need it. These fleece garments are tougher and stiffer than what you'd expect, and they're much more suited to work than most outdoor gear brand fleece. Looking at these jackets side by side, you can tell that the overall design has been slimmed down and that the zipper has changed from metal to plastic. Now this was surprising. So again, I asked my contact over at Carhartt who told me that the plastic zippers are actually less prone to failure in the cold and are tougher than the original metal version. This makes sense since the metal becomes brittle in the cold and come to think of it, every expedition jacket that I've ever seen uses plastic zippers. So I guess I'm just used to metal zippers on Carhartt jackets. All right, let's go over these things one by one and compare the old model to the new model. Okay, so this is the Active Jack. This is actually the exact model that my buddy had when he came into work that one time, and you can tell that this thing is stiff. I mean, look, the arms don't even go down. It's like that kid in a Christmas story. And that has to do a lot with not only the design, but also that thousand denier material that they're using there. So this also has the old style ribbed cuff and hem, uh, which gets to be a little tiring on your arm hair after a little while. And uh, the other thing I want to draw your attention to is if you have a look at the pull strings for the hood, they're external on the old model, which was kind of a safety issue. If you leaned over and that got caught in some sort of rotating tool, it was a problem. You'll see that on the new ones, those have been moved to the inside. And again, there's that metal zipper too. So this is the, the least expensive model that they offer as far as, you know, jackets go. It's very simple, two pockets on the outside, a hood and it's enough to get the job done, keep you safe. These are jackets that a lot of people wear, especially when they really go through them quite a bit. If you're carrying bricks, if you're doing a lot of things that are very abrasive and you just, just run through jackets like crazy, this being the least expensive model is typically the one that you'd probably go with. And you know, looking at the inside here, so you can tell that the X's are much bigger, the, the pockets of insulation, this is before they use the 3M Thinsulate, and this is a very warm jacket on its own. One thing to look at though is look at the different designs that they use on the sleeves as compared to the body. On the body it's almost like they're diamond shaped and on the sleeve you have that sort of more uh, figure eight type. And I think that's to aid in movement. They've changed that up completely in the new model. Now two interior pockets, again a very simple jacket. It'll keep you warm and you can lay underneath, underneath it if you want to, but um, there's no doubt about it that this is, uh, this is kind of antiquated, especially compared to the new model. Now here you go, you can really see how generously cut this thing is. Now this is a large, and it, it makes me look like I gained about 40 pounds. This isn't bad if you have to layer underneath it, because you can put on <laughs> a sweater. You may even be, you know, something like a lighter jacket you could probably wear underneath it if you really wanted to, but it gives you that Michelin Man look, which isn't always great when you're trying to get through studs. Now compare that to the new model. First off, you can tell that it's been trimmed down quite a bit. They also gave you an additional chest pocket, and they took this from what was a very bare bones basic jacket and gave you a lot more features. So in my opinion, it's a much better value overall. As I mentioned there, there's the, um, the external drawstrings, which are actually internal, and I realize it right about here. <laughs> that those actually do go on the inside and they have little keepers which will keep them in there and that's a lot that's much safer if you are working with grinders or or a demo saw or anything that's rotating now there you go the outside of the jacket again just a much better thought out piece the the chin goes a little bit higher up on you to kind of block all the wind and everything again just a much more premium look uh, you can take a look here, the articulated elbows, those help in the movement as well. One thing that I did notice is that they don't have their full swing gussets on the shoulders of this model. Again, I'm not sure if that was a cost-saving measure. I didn't have any issues with moving my arms. 
Now, if you look at the top of the hood here, you will see that that's actually an adjustable hood. They've done this on all their models. You can shorten up the hood depending on what you're wearing or how big your head is. Me being Polish, I got a big old noggin, so I usually I leave that thing on the biggest setting. But overall, this thing is, is they've really elevated it to just a, a new level. And that front pocket there is really handy, especially for devices, you know, your, your phone or anything that you just want to keep safe and you can hear, you know, it's closer to your ears. So it works out really well in that regard as well. This material, I've got to say, it does make a huge difference as far as mobility goes. You don't feel restricted. You feel like you can move a lot more. Those are the storm cuffs. So now those actually have a ribbed internal cuff like with some of their higher end models, and then it has the cuff that goes over it so you don't see the exposed uh, ribbed cuff like you did with the old ones. There's that reflective tape on the outside. How much of a difference that makes, I'm not really sure. Now here, you have a look at the inside. This again is the different approach that they took to the insulation. This uses that 3M thin slit, which is very, very nice, warmer than the original, and you can see that they've they've really stitched it differently on the inside. Now, I'm not, I'm not really sure if this has anything to do with the material that they used at all, or if it's the, you know, a function of uh, bigger pockets, more warmth. All I know is that it does work in the cold. The Active Jack comes in at $170. All right, here we have the full swing jacket, and as indicated by the name, this has the full swing gussets behind the arms, but I really felt like this was always the upgrade to the Active Jack. Now, it does kind of fit a different set of uh, needs. Obviously, you can see that it doesn't have the ribbed hem at the bottom there, which is a little bit worse for keeping out the weather, but it does have this snap-on hood, which in my opinion was superior to the Active Jack because it came up a little bit higher on your chin. Now, that's about 30 bucks, you know, an add-on, and you can do the same thing with the new model, but I just really feel like this was a more well-thought-out piece, and especially if you're doing work where you don't really have to worry about wind gusts coming up and, and that ribbed hem, um, it was a much better jacket. Had a lot more storage with those two chest pockets, the lower pockets, uh, and it was also warm. Now, I did wear this a little bit in the field, this older model. I didn't wear it a whole lot because, again, that extra bulk, and you'll see a little bit later on when I try it on, that this thing really does fit big. I mean, it's big, it's stiff, it's bulky. Also, take a look at the front there. Notice the wind flap, that storm flap they call it sometimes. That's another thing that you get with the added uh, kind of upgrade of this jacket versus the active jack. And it does a nice job of really keeping out the weather. These things, they're like a, you know, they're like a brick shelter. They really are. Now here we have again the old approach to the insulation on the inside with the diamonds on the main body and that sort of swirly figure eight pattern or whatever you want to call it on the arms. Again, I think that was supposed to aid in mobility. I'm not really sure. There you go. You have the flipped up corduroy collar snapped on to the additional hood that you can buy. Um, if you have this jacket, I think that the hood is really a necessity because there's sometimes where you're really just going to want the extra wind resistance. Here you go. Take a look at that thing. Man, that's a big puffy jacket. <laughs> Again, this is in size large, so, you know, it looks like an XL. If you want to layer up underneath it or you're a bigger guy, great. But, I mean, I, uh, I mean, just look at that thing. It, it really does look like it's wearing me rather than me wearing it. Now compare that to the new model, and the reason I put these fit, uh, you know, pieces side by side is so you can really see the difference in the design. Now not only do they change the design and the slimming of the body, but they also give you that side access pocket there. Same thing on the active jack, so uh, rather than the two flat pockets on the top, they give you those two. Same thing has the full swing gussets, which was never a problem before. You know, it's nice that you can move in this thing, but the collar has also changed. So instead of the corduroy collar, you now have this uh, more of a almost like a moto collar that comes up and it doesn't flip down. I've tried to flip it down and it doesn't really do that, but they did add some nice material along the top. So where it contacts your skin, you can see them black there. Uh, it's nice and soft, so that's good. And you can actually snap on a hood to this as well. There you have the articulated elbows. Those are on basically all of their jackets at this point. I think that's just a, something that they've implemented across all of their models. The reflective strips there, which really aren't obnoxious and they don't really detract from the look at all. The original storm flap is still there. Looks like there's some gussets in those front pockets as well, the lower pockets. So I think that you can probably actually storm more in there if you wanted to. I'm a really big fan of this new color. I think that they really did a great job with it. The black was great and it's actually better, especially if you want to attract the sunlight, you know, and keep warm by the radiation of the sun. 
that's pretty nice. But if you don't really care about that, or if you just don't like black, or you know you want something that's a little bit different, this new color is awesome. I think it looks dynamite. Of them all, this really feels like the most dressed up kind of professional looking one as well. This looks like a jacket that you could throw on, uh, not over business casual, but you know, if you're looking for a jacket that maybe was a little bit more grown up, this is the one here. All right, having a look at the inside, here you go again. They've used the same approach with uh, the 3M thin slit. They've gone again with those, those sort of X patterns on the arms and the straight across, you know, like directly across the body um, pattern holding in the insulation on the interior of this thing. Now take a look at those, those elbows on this one. That's something that was really a surprise when I turned this thing inside out. Well, there's the two pockets. I'm talking about the elbows though. Um, when I turned this thing inside out, I was surprised to see this very nice material on the elbows. And it's nice and soft to the touch. And what I think that's for is maybe if you're going to throw this thing on, you know, and you had a short sleeve shirt and you just had to run out and do something, it, uh, it, it's, it's pleasing against, against your skin. Now look at the inside there too. Where there may be contact with your skin, they added in some more of that soft material. So really overall, just a better thought out piece. I really think this is a... Uh, this is a really nice jacket, no doubt about it. The full swing coat comes in at $190. These fleece pieces are awesome. One of the problems with having fleece, you know, working in it was that they were never really tough enough to take any kind of abrasion. They weren't built for the job site. Now these really are, especially with, you know, the areas that you would normally rip fleece or you may get, you know, uh, something that would damage it. They've put that Cordura there, so they've taken advantage of using that new material um, in any place they can. But this high loft fleece, this is something that I remember getting a long time ago from like EMS or something and layering it underneath my pieces uh, to get that extra insulation. I'm so glad that they've embraced this, this kind of uh, technology and this trend of high pile fleece. Now it may look a little funky and you may have to wash it more, especially if you're getting you know into uh, dirt and dust and stuff like that but the insulation of these things are just incredible. And I actually was able to wear the, um, the jacket version of this when it was 30 degrees, and it, it did a wonderful job. It really did. Two interior pockets as well, so you still have plenty of storage, a total of five pockets on the vest alone. Now, this is in a medium, so that's why it fits a little bit tighter like that, but if you're going to layer it with it, I think that's the way you want it. You don't want too much room. And it, you know, it still gives you enough room. I mean, I'm wearing a t-shirt here, but if you wanted to wear something a little bit bigger underneath it, you absolutely could. And I really think that they just did a wonderful job with this. Now, if you want to zip it way up, uh, you can to kind of block all the wind or to give yourself a little extra insulation. Just watch out for your beard if you do, <laughs> if you have a beard, because if you get that thing caught, that doesn't feel too good. The fleece vest comes in at $100. Now the jacket's basically the same thing as the vest, but the difference is obviously it has sleeves and a hood. Now on the sleeve, you have one of those zipper pockets. I almost never use these pockets, but I know people who do and they swear by them. I guess it's probably a good idea if you're going to carry like a notepad or something small on your, on your arm. Uh, however you choose to use it. Great. Now that this is, they call it the fleece active jack. All right. So it's basically the fleece version of that jacket. And that's where it's really interesting in a lot of ways. This is less of a mid-layer, and it really could function as a jacket, a standalone jacket by itself. I have worn this jacket underneath nothing more than a high-visibility vest, and it did a wonderful job down into the 30s. So, you know, you can layer with it if it's really, really bad out, but this could absolutely be worn by itself without anything else over it, and, uh, you know, well down into the 30s. Now, everything that you liked about the active jack, those internal... Um, pull cords for the, the hood and everything, those are still there. Again, this is in a medium, so it's a little bit uh, smaller than, than the active jack would be that you saw earlier. But for layering, that's kind of what you want. And I mean, look at that. I mean, it's, 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 they've really taken the, the active wear inspiration and brought it into work wear. I'm so glad to see it. And you see on the back of the arms there, it has that Cordura. The fleece active jack comes in at $130. My favorite of the bunch is this parka. This thing is unbelievable. 
Now we have a, we had a couple of days that were down to think of eh, about 16 degrees. You know, it's still only November, so we haven't had any real deep freeze moments just yet. But uh, we had some wind going. It was 16 degrees with the wind chill, really, really cold. And this thing kept me toasty warm. It was incredible. Now, this has everything that you've seen before plus more. So you have the, the sleeve pocket there. You have the four pockets in the front. Same layout as the others with the side access and the top flap access. And it has an, another pocket that goes in the back. Now, I know on some of the Filson models, this is called a map pocket. Um, there you go, the adjustable hood. Oh, also, see that fur on the front there, which is meant to create dead space? That's removable. So if you don't like that, you can, you can uh, snap it out and you don't have to worry about it. Especially if you're doing a job where it's extremely dirty or dusty. That might not be good. Now the insulation on this is again that featherless down. They've tested this jacket to be within one or two degrees of the Canada Goose jackets. And I believe it, especially after wearing it in the really, really cold weather. Um, it's incredibly warm. So the approach to the interior of this jacket, the insulation, is different than the others. Again, this is a standalone piece in my opinion. It's just wonderful. There you go, if you look really close, you see that um, corduroy on the any spot up near your chin to make it you know, nice against your skin. Also, have a look around the midsection. Right below the pockets, you'll see a drawstring. And what this does is actually sucks in the midsection of the jacket. There you go, right there. Sucks in the midsection of the jacket to allow you to um, keep out any kind of wind or anything. For a parka, I mean, it fits pretty well. Most of the time, these things are going to be pretty billowy anyway, and they do allow for layering underneath, and this certainly does, but... It, like I said, it has everything that the other two jackets have had prior to this that I've shown, plus more. And it's just, uh, to me, this is the real gem of the bunch. This is where they really knocked out of the park. It's just uh, a fully featured jacket that I think would really suit anybody who's going to be going into some bad weather. There's that weird back pocket. Again, maybe you could help me out. What's that for? I don't know. I mean, storing big things? Is it for a seating pad? I don't know. But if you do know, please tell me. The insulated parka comes in at $300. All right, these are the old insulated bibs, and I gotta say, I really do dig that like gold-colored metal hardware against the black. I think that looks really cool, but this is, look how simple this is. Two slash pockets on the chest, two hand warmer pockets in the front, two open pockets in the back. That's all it is, and that was kind of one of the complaints about this old series, that it was so simple. The new model, on the other hand, has quite a few more pockets on it. Now, besides the two that are now facing inward, they have two hand warmer pockets on the side and also two lower cargo pockets. On the back are two pockets as well, but now they have flaps on them. And check out these cool new releases for the straps. The Yukon Extreme bibs come in at $200. These are the coveralls that I bought when I was doing all that rigid overhead stuff in that parking garage. And it's a great piece, it really is. Now it has these external slash pockets just like the bibs. Overall, it's a pretty simple piece. Now it does have a hammer loop, as you can see on the left hand side there. But besides pockets, one of the big issues was that zipper, which didn't allow you to go to the bathroom. Well, I mean, you could go to the bathroom, but you had to unzip the entire top. More or less, that fly just didn't come down low enough for you to do your business. The new model, on the other hand, not only is it slimmer, but it also has some better laid out pockets. Now you have the two on the front there. You have the two on the outside, just like the old model, facing outward. Now, unlike the bibs, this doesn't have the lower cargo pockets, but it does retain the flapped back pockets and, of course, the side pockets as well, although the hammer loop is now on the right side rather than the left, so that was kind of interesting. And luckily, that zipper goes all the way down to where a normal zipper on pants would be, so you can use the bathroom worry-free. The Yukon Extreme coveralls come in at $250. So as you can tell, Carhartt definitely took the recommendations from people who wear their stuff out in the field and applied it to the new line. These are really very, very different than the old ones. And when you wear the old model compared to the new one, it 
it doesn't even feel like it's in the same league anymore. It's much, much more refined. But the real gem of them all, in my opinion, is that parka. That parka is is really unbelievable. It's incredibly warm. We had a few days here. It's only the end of November. But we had a few days here which dipped down into the 30s. And with the wind chill, they were down to the teens. And I had a chance to wear this parka. I was actually out in the, the weather all day with it. And I remained cozy warm. At least uh, <laughs> at least my, my upper torso did. And it's just... I'm going to break that onto its own review because that right there, in my opinion, is really the gem of the bunch. What an awesome piece. I continue to be a huge fan of Carhartt because of what they've done here, which is actually listen to their customers and apply what they learn to their new products. How many other companies really do that? A lot of times it seems like a lot of these companies, they just operate within a box and they don't really care about much else that happens outside of their walls, L much less the people who actually use their stuff in the field every single day. That's why Carhartt really, in my opinion, is, is, a, is a standout company. And I love what they've done with this new Extreme series. So if you want to check out any of the pieces that I've shown today, in addition, also some of the women's line, I've listed them in the description below for your convenience. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Catch you next time.